Let's talk about view transitions and what you can do to change up the way we switch from one view to the next. There are four view transitions that are available for mobile projects. And to test those out, let's go ahead and in our declarations tag, and I'm in the basic view app MXML, and here I can add some basic view transitions that we can apply. So the first one is a cross fade, whoops, cross fade view transition. And for this one, we want to give it an ID so that we can reference it. And so we'll call this cross fade and we can give it a duration. Uh, the duration is in milliseconds. So let's say 300 milliseconds and that should do it. Now the next one we have would be a flip view transition. We'll call this for this ID, we'll call this flip transition. And it also has a duration. And we set this for 300. And then this one also has a direction. And the direction can be the where you want it to flip up, down, left or right. So for our purposes, let's do left. And we'll close that. Then the next one is the slide view. Now this is the default. This is what we've been seeing already. So we have this slide view. And for now, let's go ahead and add that slide transition. And we can set the duration. This is how you may um, set, you know, change the, the behaviors of the transition. And so here we're referencing this. So let's do 300 milliseconds as well. And there is also a direction. Uh, by default, the direction is uh, according to whether you're pushing or uh, popping the view. Uh, for our purposes, why don't we try this? Why don't we change this up? Change it up to up. <laughs> and finally, the fourth one is a zoom view transition. And we'll give this an ID. We'll call it zoom transition and set a duration of 300. And for this one, um, you can do this idea of an end view and a start view. So you can zoom in or zoom out depending on uh, the direction, the end view. And so for now, we can just leave it as a default, but you can modify some of those settings. So go ahead and save that. now. Remember in this uh, navigator pop to first view function, uh, it wants to give us an option where we can set up a transition. See, it's expecting a, a transition as an option. So let's pass in the crossfade. Go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and run this. And we'll run this on the desktop. And pick a device. Go ahead and click Run. All right, so now when we transition, notice that we haven't changed the basic transitions, right? But when I click the Home button, that's where we have our new transition. And so notice it was a crossfade. See that again? Crossfade. Ooh, crossfade. Ooh. Now, uh, we could fiddle with that. You can set some duration changes. Let's go ahead and try the uh, flip view transition. Whoops. <laughs> uh, I just need to call it the actual name, the ID flip transition. That's what I meant to say. All right. Let's go ahead and save that and let's run it. And again, this action is happening on the uh, home button. So click the home button. And hey, did you see that? Check it out. Hey, cool, man. All right, now one thing we're noticing, uh, when we have these transitions, notice that the controls don't change. Uh, the title changes. Notice here when we have this slide view, the title changes, but the buttons and, and, and the action bar is not really transitioning. Now there is a property that we can set, and let's look at this over here. I'm gonna test out the slide view next. The property says transition controls with content. What that means is the action bar 
will end up moving with the animation depending on how we have this set. So let's go ahead and set that to the slide view transition. So we call it a slide transition. Now you're saying to yourself, well Brent, the default is slide transition, so will we really see this? Well, let's talk about that. Notice we set it on the home button navigation. So go ahead and test that. And we select, and now when we press the home button, let's pay attention. Ooh, cool. Now, did you see that? Notice, hey, hey, that the action bar slid with the animation. Let's change this to false and see what that looks like. False. Uh, I need to make sure I close out the ADL. And so I've changed that to false. I'm going to save that and then go ahead and press play. And now let's click the home button. Watch. Pay attention. Ooh, see? And now again, that uh, property, transition controls with content, that's, that affects whether the action bar moves with the transition. All right, now let's do the last transition, which is the zoom. And we call this zoom transition. And let's test that out. Go ahead and press play. And when we hit the home button, oh, did you see that? Check it out. One more time. Ooh, one more time. Ah. All right, so you have zoom in, zoom out, and you can change those properties. So what we've done is set the transitions to each view. And you could go in here and, for example, basic view app user list view. You could set up under declarations. You could, let's just do that right now. Let's copy and paste one of these. Let's go with the flip transition. I'm going to cut this and I'm going to paste it here in this declaration so I can access it within this view. And you can see, you can mix and match. You can have one transition for one type of view, one transition for another type. Um, the only thing I would caution is make sure that you use it wisely. We don't want to be uh, flipping out, so to speak, where you transition in very sporadic ways. You want it to be something that's consistent and that makes sense. So the question becomes, well, Brent, what if I want it to be a uh, transition that happens all the time? For example, whenever I push a view, I want to do a specific transition all the time. Well, the way you do that is you can set what we call the default push transition as well as a default pop transition. And when you set this, it affects all of the views based on those two defaults. So in our first view, this is where we'll set our code. Notice I have the uh, flip view transition and I'm going left and let's duplicate this and this time let's, let's change it so that this one goes right. And the way we set that up, whoops, flip transition, I gotta change the ID. Let's call this flip right and let's change this one to flip left. Okay, so now we have two transitions defined. Now, what I want to do is in this first view, which is the root view, I want to call a function when this loads so that it creates the default push transition and default pop transition for us. So up here in the view tag, let's add a, a creation complete event, creation complete. And let's go ahead and generate a creation complete handler because that's cool. I love how it does that. And down here we have transition. Now, uh, remember we named these flip left, flip right. So let's set this and it's set to the uh, navigator. And remember that's the global view navigator for the uh, views. And we're going to say default Notice how it says pop transition. We're going to set that equal to, and let's see. So every time we pop, we want to flip to the right. Okay, now navigator dot default, and we'll do push transition. We're going to flip left. Now go ahead and save that. Uh, when you set defaults, Anytime you have a custom transition, it's going to override that. So let's let's remove this because we don't want to do the zoom transition here. Let's go ahead and save this. And again, just a quick review. We have set two flip transition views. 
and now we're setting them to the default. So we're changing the entire app so that it behaves uh, with these new transitions. So go ahead and run this. And let's click the first thing. Ooh, it flips. Now let's go back. Ooh, see that? It flipped the other direction. Awesome. Flip and flip and flip backwards. Ha ha ha. Flip and flip. And let's do the device back. Flip back. Look at that. All right. So what we've done is created custom view transitions for our mobile app.